I rise today to address and reject the mischaracterization accusations from many in this body that the cartoon from my office is dangerous or threatening. It was not, and I reject the false narrative categorically. I do not espouse violence towards anyone. I never have. It was not my purpose to make anyone upset. I voluntarily took the cartoon down, not because it was itself a threat, but because some thought it was. Out of compassion for those who generally felt offense, I self-censored. Last week, my staff posted a video depicting a policy battle regarding amnesty for tens of millions of illegal aliens. This is an enemy that speaks to young voters who are too often overlooked. Even Twitter, the left's mouthpiece, did not remove the cartoon, noting it was in the public's interest for it to remain. The cartoon directly contributes to the understanding and the discussion of the real-life battle resulting from this administration's open border policies. This body is considering passage of Mr. Biden's reckless socialist Marxist $4.9 trillion spending bill that provides $100 billion for amnesty to tens of millions of illegal aliens already in this country. This is what the left doesn't want the American people to know. Our country is suffering from the plague of illegal immigration. I don't stop pointing this out, nor will I. Millions of illegal aliens, drugs, and human traffickers are being led in and moved around our country in the dead of night, all condoned by this administration. For this cartoon, some in Congress suggest I should be punished. I have said decisively, there is no threat in the cartoon other than the threat to immig the immigration poses to our country. And no threat was intended by my staff or me. The American people deserve to have their voices heard in Congress. No matter how much the left tries to quiet me, I will continue to speak out against amnesty for illegal aliens, defend the rule of law, and advance the American first agenda. Just if I must join Alex Gentlemen's recognized 30 seconds. If I must join Alexander Hamilton, the first person attempted to be censored by this House, so be it. It is done. Madam Speaker, I yield back. Gentleman from Florida. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to yield three minutes to the author of this resolution, uh, the gentlelady from California. The gentlelady is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank um, my colleague for giving me this time. I take no pleasure in introducing this resolution. No one asked me to introduce it. No one tapped me on the shoulder. I am a victim of violence. I know what it's like. I also was in the gallery clamoring for life when the shots rang out in the speaker's lobby. We're here today because a sitting member thought it was okay, okay to post a deranged animated video of himself killing a fellow member of this House and also attacking the President of the United States. That video has been seen by three million people. It was up for over two days before it was taken down. Inciting violence begets violence. Congressman Ocasio-Cortez has become the go-to subject of the radical right to stir up their base, as too often is the case for women of color. It is disgusting and profoundly unacceptable. Tragically, the minority leader has not condemned the video. For eight days, he said nothing. Silence speaks volumes. Silence normalizes violence. Violence against women in politics is a global phenomenon. A 2016 survey by the Interparliamentary Union found that 82% of women parliamentarians have experienced psychological violence, and 44% have received threats of death, rape, beatings, or abduction. The intent of these online threats against women is clear. Silence them. Strip them of their power and discourage them from running for office. The congressman defends his post, published with House resources and posted on his official Twitter and Instagram accounts. It didn't stop there. 
he sent an email to supporters that weekend stating that the faux outrage was infantile. This is not faux outrage. This is not infantile. And then he went on to say the accusations are shrill and hyperventilating. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to glean that this is gendered, coded language. The congressman shows no remorse. In fact, yesterday the congressman said, I did not apologize. 23 members of the House in the history of this country have been censored for actions including insulting the speaker or using unparliamentary language. Certainly, conduct by a member depicting murdering another member of the House deserves censure. Let me be clear, if a Democrat did the same thing, I would introduce the same resolution. With that, I yield back. Gentlelady from Indiana. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to yield one minute to the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Baird. Gentleman's recognized for one minute. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you, uh, the lady from Indiana. Madam Speaker, you know, today I rise in the light of recent events, and I can no longer feel like I can stay silent. The hypocrisy of this body, considering the censuring and stripping of committee assignments of Representative Gosar, is illustrative of the inability of this body to effectively legislate. It demonstrates why many Americans have lost all confidence in our ability to be and provide effective leadership. I have found Mr. Paul Gosar to be an honorable and effective legislator, and I have found him to care deeply for his colleagues and America. I yield back. Gentleman from Florida. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield one minute uh, to the gentleman from Rhode Island. Gentleman is recognized for one minute. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank the majority leader. I rise in strong support of this central resolution. I watched this video, and I was sickened when I saw what was Mr. Gosar depicting the killing of another member of this body and brandishing swords at the President of the United States. This kind of rhetoric is not just unfitting of a U.S. representative. It's dangerous, and it can be deadly, as we saw on January 6th. And in 2011, when an individual shot then Congresswoman Gabby Giffords after Sarah Palin sent out a video with shooting targets on various congressional districts, including Gabby's. This is not a joke. This is not about politics. It's about safety. And while healthy debate on the issues, on different policy issues, is important, it's what keeps our democracy alive. This is not that. We cannot allow members to encourage and incite violence, period. And Mr. Gosar, you are no Alexander Hamilton. You must be held accountable. I yield back.